We talked about finding the connected components of an undirected graph and saw that we could do this by a depth or breadth first search. An analogous notion in a directed graph is what is called a strongly connected component. These are a bit more complicated to find than connected components in an undirected graph. But in this video, we, dis we discuss an algorithm called Kosaraju's algorithm that can find the strongly connected components of a directed graph and time proportional to the number of vertices plus the number of edges. Remarkably, this algorithm is again based on depth first search. Connectivity is a richer notion in directed graphs than in undirected graphs. Remember that we said an undirected graph is connected if and only if there is a path between every pair of vertices. So the undirected graph on the left here is connected. For directed graphs, there are two notions of connectivity we can consider. A directed graph is weakly connected if and only if the graph obtained by replacing all the directed edges by undirected ones is connected when viewed as an undirected graph. If we replace all the directed edges of the graph on the right by undirected ones, we get the graph on the left. So this directed graph on the right is weakly connected. It's more typical in directed graphs to study another notion of connectivity, which is called strong connectivity. So we say that two vertices, u and v, are strongly connected if and only if there is a directed path from u to v and a directed path from v to u. So in this picture, vertices 1 and 2 are strongly connected. Vertex 2 is out adjacent to vertex 1, and you can walk from vertex 2 to vertex 0 to vertex 1. On the other hand, vertices 0 and 4 are not strongly connected. There is a path from vertex 4 to vertex 0, but there is no path from vertex 0 to vertex 4. We say that a directed graph is strongly connected if for every pair of vertices in the graph, they are strongly connected. So for every u and v in the graph, there should be both a path from u to v and a path from v to u. So this graph is not strongly connected. We also talked about connected components in undirected graphs. These were maximal subsets of vertices, such that every pair of vertices in the subset were connected to one another. Here's the analogous idea with the notion of strong connectivity in a directed graph. A strongly connected component is a subset S of vertices of maximal size with the property that every pair of vertices in S is strongly connected. So in other words, it is a subset of vertices S such that every pair of vertices in S is strongly connected and we cannot add any additional vertex to S and maintain this property one. So that is meant, what is meant by saying that S is of maximal size. This example graph here has three strongly connected components. One consists of the vertices 0, 1, 2, and 3. We can get to any of these vertices from any other. And this is a maximal set of strongly connected vertices because none of these vertices are strongly connected to any other vertex in the graph. For example, 0 and 5 are not strongly connected because although there is a directed path from vertex 0 to vertex 5, there is not a directed path from vertex 5 to vertex 0. Another strongly connected component in this graph is just the vertex 4 by itself. Vertex 4 has no incoming edge, so it has to be in a strongly connected component by itself. Finally, we have this strongly connected component of vertices 5, 6, and 7. These form a cycle, so they are all strongly connected to one another, but they are not strongly connected to any of the other vertices 0 through 4. Maybe you see from this example the strong role that cycles play in strongly connected components. Let's consider the extreme case of a DAG that has no cycles. So let's say that we have a DAG. What are the strongly connected components? You can pause the video here if you want to think about this for a minute. 
Well, in a DAG, every vertex itself is a strongly connected component. If we had even two vertices, U and V, that were strongly connected, that is, if there was a path from U to V and a path from V to U, then this would mean that the graph would have to have a cycle. But in a DAG, we don't have any cycles, so that cannot happen. Okay, now let's talk about an algorithm to identify the strongly connected components of a directed graph. We are going to talk about an algorithm of Kosaraju that can do this in just two passes of depth-first search. So the running time is going to be of order the number of vertices plus the number of edges. The algorithm is quite simple to state, but it takes some effort to see why it works. We're just going to go over the argument that it works at a high level, and this explanation will be an optional part of the course. Before we give Kosaraju's algorithm, we need to introduce one new concept, which is the transpose of a graph. Given a directed graph G, the transpose graph is obtained by reversing the direction of every edge in the graph. The name comes because the adjacency matrix of the transpose graph is just the transpose of the adjacency matrix of the original graph. A key thing to note about the transpose graph of G is that G and G transpose have exactly the same strongly connected components. If there's a path from U to V in G, then this gives a path from V to U in G transpose, since the edge directions are reversed. So this means that two vertices, U and V, are strongly connected in G, if and only if they're strongly connected in G transpose. And this results in the same strongly connected components in G and G transpose. So the first step in Kosaraju's algorithm is to use depth-first search on G transpose to compute a reverse post order. After that, we're going to do a depth-first search on G. And we start this depth-first search on the first vertex in the reverse post order that we obtained from G transpose. So in this example, a reverse post order of G transpose turns out to be 5670213 So in step 2 we would start that first search on G with the vertex 5 And after we visit everything reachable from vertex 5 we would then look for the next unmarked vertex according to the reverse post order of G of G transpose and then we would start that first search on this vertex and we keep going in this way. So for clarity, here is what I mean in code. The outer loop, the function dfs, now accepts a reference to a vector as an argument. And this vector determines the order in which we iterate over the vertices in the for loop here. So in step two, we would call dfs on the graph g and we'd pass in the vector that has the reverse post order of G transpose. Now, the amazing thing in Kosaraju's algorithm is that when you do step two, all the vertices on a call to DFS visit form a strongly connected component. So one way to collect all these strongly connected components is to do the following. We have a deck of sets, which is called SCC for strongly connected components. And when in the DFS outer loop, we find a new unmarked vertex V, we're going to create a new set in SCC with the vertex V in it. And then as we're doing the call of DFS visit on V, for every vertex that we visit in this call, we're going to add that vertex to the set with vertex V. So that's done in this line that's highlighted here. And all of these vertices are going to be in the same strongly connected component with vertex V. So the code for Kosaraju's algorithm is available at this Godbolt link. And I've somewhat simplified the code on this slide here to make everything fit. So it's pretty easy to see the running time of Kosaraju's algorithm. 
we can compute an adjacency list for G transpose from the adjacency list of G in time order number of vertices plus number of edges, just by iterating through all the edges of G and adding the reverse of that edge to the G transpose graph. Apart from that, we just do two passes of depth first search, one on G transpose and one on G. So the total running time is order number of vertices plus number of edges. The correctness of Kosaraju's algorithm is the more difficult part to see. I'm going to go over why it works at a high level, and this part will be optional for the course. So a key to understanding why Kosaraju's algorithm works is to think about what is called the component graph. You can think about the component graph as shrinking each strongly connected component down to a point and then looking at the edges that are left over in the graph while ignoring multiple edges. More formally, the vertices in the component graph are labeled by the strongly connected components of the graph. And there's going to be an edge between two components, SI and SJ, if and only if there's an edge UV in the original graph for some U in SI and V in SJ. Now I should mention that the component graph is a useful object more generally, even outside of the context of Kosaraju's algorithm. In the case of undirected graphs, we said that a common first step of an algorithm is to identify the connected components, because then the algorithm can work on each connected component separately. The same thing is true in the directed case. A common first step of an algorithm is to identify the strongly connected components of the graph. But unlike in the undirected case, there can still be edges between strongly connected components. And the presence of these edges means that once we process each strongly connected component individually, we might still have to do some work to link together these results on each strongly connected component to finish our computation. The component graph can tell us how we should proceed to link together these results. So a key fact about the component graph is that it's a DAG. If there was a cycle in the component graph, then the union of the components on the cycle would again be a strongly connected component. And this would con contradict the fact that the components were of maximal size to begin with. So since the component graph has, is a DAG, it has a topological sort. So here I've drawn a topological sort for our example component graph. Now the key to Kosaraju's algorithm is that in the second step of the algorithm, we're actually going to do depth first search in reverse topological sorted order of the component graph. So let's see why this is a good idea. If we start DFS visit at the red dot, that is one of the vertices in the last strongly connected component in the topological order, then we cannot escape from this component as we're doing depth first search. This is because the last component in the topological order has no outgoing edges to any other component. So DFS visit begun at any one of the vertices in this yellow oval here will exactly discover the last strongly connected component. We can similarly argue to see that we find all the strongly con connected components when we do DFS in reverse, in reverse topological order on the component graph. For example, let's see what happens when we move to the next strongly connected component in the reverse topological order, and we start DFS visit at a vertex there. So say that we start DFS visit at one of the vert vertices 0, 1, 2, or 3. Now there can be outgoing edges from this component to components to the right of it in the topological order. But the key is that all the components to the right in the topological order have already been explored by depth first search and thus are already marked. So that's the only vertices that we're going to newly mark when we do DFS visit on one of the vertices in this pink component are exactly those vertices in the pink component. 
OK, so hopefully this gives you the idea of why, do, why doing depth first search in reverse topological order of the component graph will give us the strongly connected components. The main question remaining is, how do we find the topological order of the component graph? I mean, we don't even know what the component graph is. That's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the strongly connected components. So this is the brilliance of the first step of Kosaraju's algorithm, where we find the reverse post order of G transpose. In our example here, the reverse post order of G transpose is 5670213.4. When we do DFS according to this order, you see that we're going to visit the components of the component graph in reverse topological order. And in general, you can show the following fact. The general picture is not always going to be as nice as in this example, where all the vertices in the last component, for example, come before any vertex in any other component. But what you can show is the following. And this suffices for the correctness of Kosaraju's algorithm. So you can show that for any strongly co connected component C and any vertex V that is not in C, if there is an edge from a vertex in C to V, then V appears before every vertex in C in the reverse post order of G transpose. And this fact implies that when we do depth first search in G according to the reverse post order of G transpose, we will visit components in the reverse topological order of the component graph. And I've just argued that if we do that, then we will exactly recover the strongly connected components. OK, so I'm going to leave why this fact is true as an exercise for the viewer. So this concludes our discussion of Kosaraju's linear time algorithm for finding the strongly connected components of a graph.